Welcome to Mind Body Monday and thank you all for joining me. Today's session, you are going to discover five unexpected ways to nurture yourself during this pre-Pesach season. And as you journey towards Pesach, so you can feel calm, positive, focused, happy, and have great energy too. And if you're watching the replay, go ahead and type your comments and I'll come back to you in the uh, replay platform as well. So Purim is behind us and I hope we're all enriched through it. And now take a moment with about 24, 23 days left until Pesach. Take a moment just to think about all the things that need to be done between now and Pesach. And as you're thinking about all the things that either you need to get done or things that need to be get done, just notice what thoughts, feelings, and emotions come up in you. Thinking about all the things that need to be done. And if you wouldn't mind, just go ahead and type in the chat what thoughts come up, what feelings come up, what emotions come up, when you think about all the things that need to happen between now and Pesach. Go ahead, type a few comments in the chat. So some people have written in to me, yes, thank you, overwhelmed. That's generally the first one that comes up and that's totally normal. What else? Go ahead, type in the chat when you think about all the things that need to be taken care of, all the dots, the I's to dot, the T's to cross, etc. What emotions are you aware of? Stressed, overwhelmed, anxious? This is all pretty normal. And hence the birth of today's Mind Body Monday. Because I got an email from um, someone today, and I'm just going to read it out. In fact, someone just posted something in the chat. They, chat, they posted, too much to do, clean the house, shop for food, cook, stress, overwhelm, and nervous. Thank you. Someone else has written, challenged. Yes, very much so. Very much so. Keep writing in the chat. It gives me a sense of, of what's here so I can address all these issues as well. But I'm just going to read out an email that I got today. Someone wrote in to me, there's a lot, there's not a lot of time to make good food, not much time to sit and eat properly, even less time to exercise, short on sleep, too stressed to think about meditation and deep breathing. And then they end off by asking me, um, what is the one thing to check first that I shouldn't be running on empty? This is the email straight hot off the press from Gmail. What is the one thing that I shouldn't be running on empty? Can any of you relate? Just type yes in the chat if you can relate to her email. Super. Someone else has written in the chat, not sure what I should be eating. Exactly. Exactly. So there's a beautiful story that I remind myself often, and I share it with my patients as well. And I first heard it from Stephen Covey. And he tells the story about two woodcutters, and there are many versions of the story. And this is the version that I hear and I share. And they each went off into the woods, one on the left, one on the right. And their job was to fell, cut down the forest, and before sundown, and uh, collect their payment on their way home. So off they went diligently from sunrise. And one of the woodcutters kept on looking over to the other one. And whenever he checked on him, he was sitting down, drinking a mug from his thermos of hot tea or coffee, whatever it was. Another time having a sandwich. Another time actually putting, up, putting his feet up on a log. And the other woodcutter was just working feverishly, tirelessly the entire day. And the other fellow, when he looked at him, he was just, you know, working consistently, but 
chilling along the way. And the sun was setting. And finally, when it did set and they did meet and they walked home together, the one woodchopper feeling forlorn, poorly about himself because he hadn't even failed half of the forest, while the other fella had not only cut all the trees down, but actually neatly stacked them as well. And he said, tell me, what did you do? Every time I looked over at you, you were either having a sandwich, enjoying a cup of tea, having your feet up, putting your feet up. Like, how did you do this? So he looked at him and smiled lovingly, compassionately, and he said to him, when you saw me resting, I'm not sure if you noticed that I took the time to sharpen my saw. And this is what Stephen Covey calls sharpening your saw. And he defines it pretty much as preserving, enhancing the greatest asset that we have. And that is you. You are your greatest asset. And unfortunately, it's the only thing, probably, that we cannot delegate to others. We've got to show up for ourselves and sharpen our own saw in the many different ways that that can be done. And one of the stories I share um, in, my, in my clinic is, is the oxygen mask analogy we've all flown and we've all heard many many times the the um, safety instructions if there's a drop of air pressure take your oxygen mask first and this means over the infant or the young child next to you because if you put the oxygen mask on them there's a good chance that in the emergency situation of low oxygen you're going to fluff it and not get it on them and certainly not get it on yourself. And if you do manage to do it on yourself first, then you'll be able to put theirs on them as well. And you will both live to thrive the tale. So these two um, stories, truths, are really a framework to understand how to go about this pre pesach period of time, this season. And really, it applies to every part of our life that we have a, a run-up, so to speak, towards some sort of event. It could be a simcha, a bar mitzvah, a wedding, a bris. Whatever the event happens to be, an exam, a whatever it happens to be. And how are we going to approach that? Now, it so happens that most of the women that I see in my practice, most of them actually know 100% what they need to do to advance their health and well-being and heal the challenges that they have, their health challenges. But what I see happening is because women are by nature, the caregivers and so, so dedicated to their families, that often their own needs are put aside. And I really get this. And it's so important to remember that your needs are valid. You are a super VIP because without you, there would be no Pesach or there wouldn't be no wedding or whatever the simple preparation would be. And this is exactly what I tell uh, my patients. And there's a process of validating the, what is happening. Recognize that uh, your needs are legit, 100% legit. And then working a way to sit down and have something to eat before your kids ask for their seconds or thirds, whatever the case may be. And this is one of the reasons I end every single Mind Body Monday with the slogan, Mind Body Monday is all about where self-care is the heart of healthcare. Because when you get this, when you get that taking care of yourself 
is not a selfish act. It's a very noble act. It's a noble act of giving to the other. Because then you will be at your best, feel at your best, perform at your best, and be happiest when you are taken care of. And the truth is, if you don't do it, the likelihood of someone else doing it is not that great. And this is part of the culture of developing a self-care mindset and most importantly, a self-care practice where some small steps, and I'm going to share five rather unusual steps with you today, um, where you can put these into your life in a way and a pace that's right for you, where you can be at your best in order to be at service, which is really what we all want to do. We all want to be in service of the other ultimately, because that's what really brings true happiness and fulfillment is bringing value and joy and giving to others. Because ultimately, not that necessarily we do that for this reason, but ultimately that will turn our lights on and make us feel at our best as well. So let's take this, this um, intro really and look at five ways that you can begin to nurture yourself this pre-Pesach season. And the first one's got to be beginning with the end in mind. And the question to ask is, in about 24 or so days, you'll be sitting, hopefully, at a Seder somewhere, your own, with some other's family, wherever you may be in the world. How do you want to feel in your body? How do you want to feel in your mind? How do you want to feel emotionally? How do you want to feel spiritually when you sit at that Seder in a couple of weeks' time? Go ahead. I'm just curious. Type in the chat. If you can dream your ideal vision for yourself, how do you want to feel physically? How do you want to feel emotionally? When you get to sit ready at the Seder table, go ahead, type in the chat. I'm curious to know what is here. Go ahead. I'm looking at my other screen to get a sense of what is your ideal? How would you really like to feel showing up at your Seder table? Yes, thank you. Someone's written, like I've just come out of Egypt. So emotionally, what does that mean? someone's written spiritual thank you what's the emotional quality of feeling you've just come out of egypt is it exhilarated is it relieved is it joyous what is it for you we all have different experiences of what that may be so go ahead just type a couple of suggestions in the chat so i just get to see um, and feel what is here for you how would you like to feel physically and emotionally when you sit at your Seder table, because this is the first step to begin with the end in mind. What it is you would like for yourself, accomplished and elated. Love that word. Yes, accomplished and elated. Imagine sitting there feeling accomplished and elated. I love that. Thank you. Anybody else? So with the 24 days or so that's left, even though it, it may not feel like it, you need to know that that's a lot of time. You'll be able to get everything done that you need to do. And when you think about this goal, you want to feel, in this case, accomplished, elated, spiritual, that you've just come out of Egypt. Then what needs to happen along the way for that? to be experienced. What needs to be happening along the way now that you know what your outcome is? Then you can begin to put in place the practices, the thoughts, the attitudes, the choices that will support this particular goal, this particular outcome. And keep it simple. I was just speaking to someone today and she said to me, you know what, Avram, what I would like? I would like over this period to be 
happy. So I said, that's great. I'm just curious. Um, what's going to support you to do that? Because sometimes we have a concept. We, we don't necessarily bring it down to earth sufficiently. And she said, oh, that's easy. I'm just going to put on music in my kitchen. She said, my son's got a little MP3. Could have put that on. And whenever I'm in my kitchen doing what I need to do, I'm going to have upbeat, happy music. And that's such a simple, such an easy way to do that. Um, so if you want to feel spiritual, you want to feel uplifted, you want to feel elated, you want to feel accomplished, what is it that you would like to, what is it that needs to be done today, tomorrow, next week, the week after to set that in motion so that could actually be real and achievable. So this is some of the homework, the thinking work to get the mind in, uh, in place so that way you can begin with the end in mind, have a very clear outcome for yourself, and then, and then um, set steps in place to support that. And remember, keeping it really super simple. So the second strategy that's somewhat unusual is to practice saying no to something. Because when you say no to something, you're really saying Yes to something else, and I'll get to that shortly. So around the topic of practicing saying no, it's really born out of the awareness that people can have a tendency to be people pleasers, to want to make other people happy automatically, and sometimes at great cost of leaving out their own needs. Now, saying no has to be done with wisdom, sensitivity, and discretion. And there are many ways to say no. It could be not right now, or let me think about that, or I'll come back to you tomorrow, or check in with me tomorrow, or, or however you need to phrase, or just say, I'm really sorry, it's not going to work out for me right now. However you need to language it, but just put in that soft barrier, or however it needs to be, to um, support your own self-care. It could be saying no to a Hakmasas Orchim. It could be saying no to a certain Chesed. Now, this may sound like a radical thought, but intuitively, it may be the right thing. And that's why we have uh, rabbis, teachers, mentors, who we can be a sounding board with. And one of the questions I often ask myself as a self-check is, Will I regret having done this chesed or whatever it happens to be? If for whatever the reason I'm underslept or I'm challenged in whatever the way, and I may run the risk of regretting what I've done, then that's often a sign that this is this mitzvah opportunity, or this chesed opportunity does not have my name on it. But always, this is a good um topic just to raise and bounce with somebody else to get an objective outsider's perspective so we can be free to make the right decisions in the right way at the right time. Let's look at strategy number three, which is saying yes to something. And this could be really like going for a walk at, at um, in the middle of the day or towards sunset. Actually, yesterday, I had a lot on my plate. It was a beautiful day. I decided 45 minutes before sunset to head out into the forests nearby where I live. And I did a forest walk and it was stunning with a beautiful glow, the hues across the sky, the cloud formation, the fresh breeze, sun on my face. It really sharpened my saw in more ways than I anticipated, which when I got home, I was able to do what I needed to do in a much more wholesome place. So saying yes could be yes to a yoga class, yes to a massage or a facial or getting your nails done, or yes just to go to bed a little bit earlier, even though things aren't already done. And another thing that comes up in my practice quite a lot is the concept of guilt, where many people could feel guilty about different things. And I just invite them just to be aware of that guilt and 
do what needs to be done anyway. Um, because if we're going to let the guilt drive us to make decisions, then we're not really free in our heart and our mind to do what's ultimately the best thing. So saying yes could be yes to letting go of the guilt or letting go of the need for things to be perfect all the time and, and embrace what I call the perfect imperfection. And all these are different strategies to say yes to life affirming strategies and no to those things that are going to drain your energy, drain your reserves, etc. Both in service of feeling elated and joyous and spiritual and centered and connected or whatever it happens to be for you as you sit down at the Seder in a couple of weeks' time. Let's look at strategy number four. And we're going to revert back to two very grassroots strategies. And just before I got started with today's Mind Body Monday, someone did email me again and asked me, Avram, what are your top supplements to take during a stressful period? Now, I have many strategies. I'm going to share with you the two supplements that really are, I think, probably one of the most important. And the one is to take a probiotic scientific studies have shown that stress raises cortisol levels and cortisol levels disturbs the microbiome by raising inflammation in the gut. So this happens and as a result, this inflammation, things slow down, the bad bacteria has more of a hold of the good bacteria and the microbiome um, bacteria will get out of balance and that will affect our brain through the gut brain um, um, system and through the vagus nerve as well. And taking a good probiotic supplement will help us to keep things in check, make sure that there are enough good guys there to support whatever's going on and also help your gut produce the two most important neurotransmitters for our happiness, our motivation, our sleep, and that is dopamine and serotonin. Most of these two, 95% and 50% of these two hormones, dopamine and serotonin, are made in the gut and not in the brain. So it's so important to take a good probiotic supplement, one with at least 10 to 14 different cultures. We need diversity and the high CFU colony form units. Check out my previous Mind Body Monday uh, training on probiotics and uh, gut and stress. So the fifth strategy is also supplement-based, and this one has to be magnesium. There is so, There have been so many studies about the role of magnesium when we are stressed, because magnesium interfaces with the gut, interfaces with the brain, and down-regulates stress hormones. That means it turns them off, and, it, and doing this will counteract fatigue, counteract irritability, counteract minor uh, levels of anxiety, and just help us to be more energized, more positive, um, and more calm. So these are the five strategies that I found um, that are more out of the box to support you as you prepare for Pesach. Now, even listening to these five, beginning with the end in mind, say yes to something, say no to something, and uh, taking a probiotic, taking um, uh, magnesium, and being very clear on what are you doing this all for, beginning with the end in mind is so, so important. And as you think about these five, just remember, it is not all or nothing. All you need to do is take one simple strategy. Just choose one. And you don't even have to do it every day. You can do it every other day. You can do it once a week. But the point is to make a start. Because when you do make a start, you affirm yourself and you feel empowered within yourself that you're doing something to further your health and well-being. I hope this has been helpful for you and direction for you. 
this list of five has been culled from my ideas bank of over 50 different strategies. And hopefully as we journey together on Mind Body Monday, I'll be sharing more with you. But for now, these are the top five that come to my mind and are part of my daily ritual. If you missed my announcement at the beginning of Mind Body Monday today, I'll be launching a new Heal Your Gut program. If you want to heal your gut from the inside out and you'd like to learn more about it, just type gut health in the chat and I'll come back to you with more information. Thank you once again for joining me on Mind Body Monday. And I look forward to seeing you next week. Just remember, Mind Body Monday is all about self care being the heart of healthcare. All you need to do is take one small step in the direction of health and healing in mind, body, and spirit. See you next week.